Hope everybody had a, a great Halloween. Uh, it was certainly fun for me to take my kids out uh, trick or treating yesterday. You learn a lot every year uh, about trick or treating, so it was fun, especially for my nine year old. I think he had a great time. Uh, we're excited. Uh, we're getting closer, guys. When you think about the season getting here, obviously on Friday we'll have our uh, first competition uh, in front of some people and have a chance to watch the different combinations play. Uh, I'll tell you guys, um, it'll be a little bit different. Uh, don't panic about what lineups that we will have on Friday because certainly we won't be, um, we won't have everybody. As you know, obviously Malik's out and uh, I'm not so sure if uh, Sam Hunt's gonna play. Uh, nothing that's serious, but he's got a little bruise and certainly when it comes to exhibition, um, you know, I, I try to hold guys out if I don't need those guys to play. But excited about it, um, we're, we're getting better. Uh, I think the biggest thing is we're starting to get in shape. Uh, guys are starting to believe in one another. We're playing good basketball at this time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how we play. Uh, hopefully we continue to take a step forward. But everything that we're doing right now, including the exhibition, is, is getting ready for our opener, which is next Friday uh, against VMI. And I know our guys are excited about it. And you know we've, we've competed every day uh, against each other. So it's always great to, to have a chance to play against a, a different uniform. and. Uh, guys are starting to step up as leaders. Um, I've already talked about the effect that Lenard has had, uh, but even more so, you know, Al is doing a tremendous job, as we said all along. And um, you know, it's uh, um, we're working extremely hard. I, I like where we're at. Um, I wouldn't want to play a real game today, and, and we don't have to. Um, but I've got a few more practices. I think this is our 24th practice date that we're going into, out of our 30th, and. Obviously, you have to count the exhibition as a practice, and then we've got a few practices next week before we open up against VMI. So I'll open it up to questions if you guys have questions at this time. How many games do you expect to play without Malik? I don't know. That's a great question. Uh, with Malik, uh, we're taking it real slow. Um, he is going back to the doctor um, at some point next week, uh, probably the latter part of next week, and we'll, we'll know a little bit more about it. But the answer to your question, I don't have an answer to that. You what? said, go ahead. What are some of the things Malik's able to do while rehabbing? Well, he's been, uh, we've had him on the bike. Um, he's had treatment, you know, he's getting treatment at least two or three times a day and um, doing practice, he's doing a lot of the work on the bike. Um, hopefully next week, uh, depends on what we get from the doctor's report, he can get out and get some shooting in. How did your interior guys play against Campbell without him and how did that affect the rotation? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I thought we did some really good things. Um, I, I thought, um, uh, Lenard did a great job. You know, I, if I don't have the stats in front of me, but I think Lenard had 15 and eight. Uh, I thought Amir was a little bit slow uh, as far as catching on in the scrimmage. Um, I thought he played, he was effective. He did a lot of stuff, good things, especially on the defensive end, but he didn't affect the game offensively. And certainly we've been able to watch some film with him. We went a little bit smaller uh, and you may see that uh, in our exhibition on Friday uh, where you may see more of a four guard lineup. Uh, we were able to use Torian Dorn more as a um, stretch forward than anything. You mentioned the uh, injury to Sam. You said it was a bruise, but I, maybe I missed the body part that it was. Uh, lower left leg. Okay. And so he just he's banged up. Uh, nothing serious. And you know I just you know we're, we're getting closer to the season, so I'm a little bit more cautious towards everybody, uh, all of our players. And you know uh, I know you guys are gonna have the opportunity to film the first few minutes of practice and he won't be practicing today. Hopefully we'll take him, let him take a couple of days off. Uh, uh, my thoughts are to play him on Friday, but certainly I may not. Where do you think maybe one area where this team has made the biggest strides since you kind of came in um, as far as the team as a whole? Well, I, I think we're learning how to compete. Um, and that's the biggest thing. Everything we do in, in practice is more of a competition. Uh, I think we're getting in a lot better shape. I, I know the last time I spoke to you guys, we talked about you know, uh, obviously the difference between now and Italy, uh, I, I, they're starting to believe in one another uh, and they're starting to know where each other should be on the basketball court. What now do you that think? you know you're not going to have Braxton this year, how does your backcourt rotation look and are you getting the scoring you need from there and without his shooting? Well, we're, we're going to miss that extra guard. Um, certainly when you, when you think about the way we play and certainly how we play when you talk about, you know, pressing and you know, trying to get out in transition, we'll miss him. But some other guys have to step up. You know, we, you know, when you look at Lavar as a freshman, then certainly he's going to play a lot more minutes than I ever expected him to play. And then some of the veteran guys like Markel, so where they would have had the opportunity to maybe play 28 to 30 minutes, they may play 32 to 35 minutes a game.
does not having Sam possibly this Friday change your game plan at all? It doesn't. Um, you know, listen, uh, exhibitions are great, um, but they're exhibitions. And obviously, um, you know, anytime we go out, we want to win the game, we want to compete. But certainly, I don't want to sacrifice a young man for the season because of an exhibition game. Looking back on last year, what is it that most stood out to you about Markell, good or bad, and, and what areas he could, made the biggest stride? Well, I, I thought he, I thought he played at times beside Dennis, but you know he wasn't the focal point. When you look at it, you know obviously Dennis, you know led the team in scoring, and he was the best player. And then you know obviously with Maverick and also Terry, and then even Torrin. You know, you look at him, he was maybe the fifth or sixth option where we need him to be, you know, second or third option. So, you know, obviously I, I need him to, to take ownership in the program as we talked about with the seniors, but he's got to show us some leadership from the point guard position. What would be a good number of floor burns on Friday? <laughs> I hope it's a lot. You know, uh, you know this, this, this group is fun um, because they're giving me tremendous effort. Um, but it's not going to be, you know, I want you guys to understand that we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but it's, it won't be the team that we'll put out there for the beginning of the season. It'll be a modified version of it because I couldn't even tell you right now who's going to be in the starting lineup on Friday. Um, we'll determine that next couple of days um, because of the uncertainty of whether Sam will play. And if we have anybody that may have some nicks or bruises, they may not even play on Friday. Did you get any type of rationale or explanation from the NCAA on the Beverly decision, or did they just say denied? Well, it's mostly denied, and you know it's a it's a tough thing. Um, you know, when you talk about Braxton Beverly situation, um, it, it's really I feel I'm very disappointed for the kid. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have had an opportunity to spend a lot of time with him, but what an amazing kid! But I think the young man has made an unbelievable sacrifice. You know, anytime you're able to go to a military school for two years. He went for his senior year and then obviously came back as a postgraduate. Came back as a postgraduate so he would be prepared to step into any program and play right away and then, you know, both on and off the floor and then academically. And it's a tough deal for him because I, I've said this all along, I don't consider Braxton Beverly as a transfer. I consider Devin Daniels and CJ Bryce as transfers. Both of those guys competed for another university last year. They both were full time and students and and certainly, I think Braxton's getting held up on a technicality, you know, because he got athletic-related aid. Um, my suggestion has always been if, if that's the case and that's the only reason that he's been held up, give him the opportunity to be able to pay that back. Um, because certainly, you know, in our situation, we lost a young man who, when I took the job, decided that he wanted to, to go elsewhere, and we released him. Uh, we also got LeVar Bass because of that same situation. But... If he didn't start summer school or Ohio State did not pay for him to start summer school, then certainly he would be eligible anywhere in the country. And to me, that just doesn't sound right. Did you work with Ohio State people on this? Were they receptive to you guys getting the video? Or did they put up any roadblocks? No, not at all. When you, um, anytime you file a waiver um, for any kid, for any situation, especially a kid who went to another program, you always have to get a yes or a no or permission from the other program, and Ohio State was fine. They, they agreed on it. No, um, you know they agreed that they agreed with our waiver, and they were okay with it. Uh, even to the point where Thad Mata, who is um, obviously was going to be the coach for him, wrote a letter in support of Braxton, even saying that uh, the reason why the kid came early is because his staff made him come early because they got a vote of confidence that they were going to return him. You mentioned Torin playing stretch four. What what versatility does he bring to your offense? Well, I like his game because he has the ability to score inside and out. He's athletic, he's strong, he can get to the rim, and then he's starting to make some outside shots. So it gives us a – when you look around college basketball, most of college basketball, because of what's happening in the NBA, is typically playing with uh, four guards and that fourth guard being a 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", guy. And so he gives us a lot of versatility. We can switch a lot of screens. Um, you know, he can become a mismatch problem because if he gets a bigger guy on him, he can go by him. And then in college basketball, nobody ever posts their four-man. When you look around college basketball, it's only the center. So you don't really have to worry about him playing against bigger guys inside. How's Braxton handled the situation emotionally? It's tough. I mean, he's really struggling because um, at the end of the day, you know, Braxton, as I said in my release, he, in my quote, he trusted and a lot of adults um, so you know for a young man who is done nothing wrong you got to understand this is a kid that left Hargrave Military Academy with about a 3.6 GPA 
GPA. And the only reason that he could go to Ohio State early was because of the fact that he was already a graduate. He had done everything he's supposed to. So for him, you know, he's got a lot of trust issues right now. I think he's a little bit depressed about it because of the, you know, he wanted the opportunity to come in and play right away, and he deserves to play. What have you told him about what his role will have to be this year now if he can't play in games? Well, I, I haven't, you know, something, uh, a little piece of me is still, you know, even though we filed a, um, a waiver and an appeal, a little piece of me is still <laughs> holding hope out that, you know, certainly, you know, somebody sees that this kid deserves to play. So I really haven't talked to him as far as, you know, what your role is because I don't want to go down the road with the young man. He just found out a couple of days, uh, you know, he's thinking that he's got a great opportunity to be able to play this year, and then certainly this happens. Is there anything further that the program can do to, you know, get them back on, um, back looking at this at any point? I, you know, from a, a university standpoint, I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I think um, Braxton and his family are going to uh, look at some different options. Um, I don't know what that is. I haven't had a chance to talk with those guys about it, but I know they're disappointed about the outcome. Anything else for Coach? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.